Well, first of all, thanks uh, all of you for being here. It's an exciting time of the year for us. Uh, we're about two and a half weeks into practice and uh, really have just an unbelievable focus right now to get back to who we are as uh, Colorado Buffaloes and uh, what we're about, and, and that's playing defense. That's being able to get up and down the floor, uh, playing together, playing really hard, and um, you know, just uh, being able to um, – Re-energize our program, and, and uh, it's been it's been a fun year to do that with so many young players, uh, while at the same time having some great veterans that uh, add to the mix and add some experience to our to our really really young team. Um, but it's been uh, it's been a good two and a half weeks of practice, and I'm excited about where we are. We keep getting better every single week, and I'm just uh, ready to see what this team can do as we get into some scrimmages and, and exhibition games, and then start uh, our uh, start our games on November 14th. Coach, losing uh, Ariel is pretty big. Uh, no, it's the injury, but it's early graduation. So, uh, how do you replace a player like that on this team? Well, the good thing about it is we haven't had her for, for very many years. Uh, we didn't have her all last year. Uh, really, she only played two years here. So, um, you know, we feel like uh, it's going to be somebody that, you know, Jamie Swan really was able to step up last year and, and provide uh, some good inside presence, provide some rebounding for us. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I like what Monica Burrich does, uh, both at the three and, and the four position. Uh, Mackenzie Ellis is, is a freshman for us this year that, maybe is one of the biggest surprises um, of anybody on uh, our team so far this year. She is coming off an ACL tear and, um, you know, really just I didn't know what to expect from her as, as she's coming in. And um, but she has great principles, uh, one of our best defensive players, especially on in help side, on the weak side. Um, and we really think that that uh, we have a lot of different options. You know, it's going to be rebounding is going to be a big key for us. Um, and, and defensively, we have to have somebody that can defend those athletic threes and fours. Um, and, and so right now we're still trying to see who that's going to be. And, and that's a process. And when you have young kids, it, it takes a little bit of time for them to start to understand uh, what that level is like and, and what that looks like. Step up in the leadership role this year. And I've seen that evolve so far in practice, and uh, you know, maybe expanding on that uh, this season. Yeah, you know, Haley is uh, somebody that that has to step up for us. She made huge strides from her freshman to sophomore season. Uh, we need her to make another jump this season, and and she's ha she has to start it with her defense. Um, you know, she we need her to lead on the defensive side of things. It's something that she has to really work on. It's not one of her biggest strengths. She's pretty solid at it. Um, but we need her to be more of a defensive threat. Uh, you know, Haley's really good right now at knocking down those open jumpers that other people create for her. Uh, but we've also really challenged her to be able to get to the rim. And, you know, yesterday in practice, she got to the rim three or four times. Uh, she's strong. She's one of our most athletic, strongest kids. She's extremely fit. She takes care of her body. Um, you know, she puts herself in position to be able to be very, very solid. She's always been one of our mo most consistent players. Um, and so that bodes well for your leadership, for leadership qualities. You, you need your leader to be really consistent um, and somebody that can be vocal as well as just do their job. And, and Haley's been one of those players that has just done her job in years past. And this year we need her to step up and really hold her teammates accountable, uh, set the bar high, set the standard high, and be able to, uh, be able to really communicate what it takes to, to be successful. And that's something where she, it's, it's a process and she's got to keep learning. Um, and we talk to her about that all the time. And, um, but we, we, I feel like we also have some other players that can step into that role as well. You need your point guards to be leaders on the floor. It doesn't matter if they're freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. Uh, your point guards have to be leaders. And, and so those are the things that we need Haley to lead in, in a certain way, but we also need other players to step up into that role as well. What's the, what's the learning curve for a freshman class like this? Would you expect it to be less? Would you expect by the time the conference play starts, you know, for them to be just a, you know, two or three steps ahead? Yeah, we, we want them, uh, you know, they, they have to be on a fast track. Um, you know, we're going to have one to two of them in, one to two to three of them on the floor probably at any one time. Um, 
And so we need them to catch on to things really quickly. The great thing about our freshman class is they have really, really high basketball IQs. So there are a lot of things that you're, that you're normally teaching freshmen that these guys don't have to learn. Um, you know, when to get the ball to their hands, when to get in help side. They've been really well coached in high school, in club. They've played at a really high level uh, up until this point. And so the things that we feel like we're teaching them are, um, you know, our positioning, how to get through screens, uh, offensive sets, um, those sorts of things, not necessarily, you know, angles and how to pass and um, when to get the ball out of their hands and, and things that it's really hard to teach. We're not having to teach these these freshmen. So it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun for our coaching staff to really take the next step with our team and um, our returners should already know those things and so they should be a little bit further ahead. Um, but we expect our freshmen to catch up, you know, even probably before conference. For us to have a successful season, we need them to be ready by November 14th uh, to do some great things. And then we know there's going to be some uh, some bumps and uh, along the road, and we know that they're going to, you know, we're going to have to const it's going to constantly be a, a learning process for them. But at the same time, they're highly, highly competitive kids. Uh, they have great basketball IQs. They want to win. Um, and, and they want to, they're great teammates. They want to do whatever the team needs for us to be successful. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. I mean, she's got, she has great skills on the inside. We need her to be at that inside presence for us. She's probably our best inside player at this point, and so. Um, we're going to challenge her to, to be a presence on the block. Uh, but we also like her on the move away from the basket as well, and, and that allows her to really use her athleticism. And the great thing about our offense is our fours and our fives get both opportunities. Um, if she's rebounding the basketball at a high level, which we think she will, a lot of times she'll be facing the basket and she'll be away from the basket a little bit more in our offense. Um, you know, and then defensively, she has to be a great presence on the block as well. She has to be able to get you know, eight or nine rebounds for us. And, and so, um, you know, she's she's one player that is really going to have to take a great step as a fresh or as a senior, uh, be able to be that consistent force for us on the floor every single game. It doesn't matter if we're playing a lower level opponent or playing the best opponent. She has the tendency to bring her best against the best. Uh, this season, we need her at her best um, no matter who we're playing, and, and we feel like she can be steady enough to, to be able to do that. Coach, basketball is one of the few sports here in the school that has two head coaches. Are you and Tad able to kind of take advantage of that and bounce things off each other, consult each other? Yeah, I respect Tad a, a great deal. I mean, what he's been able to come here and, and do uh, has been tremendous. And, and the neat thing about our relationship is we were hired a, within a week of each other. Um, and it's been fun to kind of grow with each other and we've had highs together, we've had lows together and uh, obviously last season for both of us was a little bit disappointing. Um, but I, you know, I respect what he does. I, I enjoy watching his practices, uh, seeing how, seeing the drills that he runs, um, you know, just in terms of how to get the best out of, out of players. I know I've gone into his, his office a few times and, hey, what do you do in this sort of scenario? And uh, I think it's always a little bit different from you know men to women and how you handle different things, but it's just great to get ideas and um, what a great staff. What what a you know I know there's a lot of staffs out there that that wouldn't necessarily talk to the women staff, you know, and so we appreciate that uh, they're just nice guys, you know. If 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 I had a son, I I would want him to play for Tad um, and and, th and those coaches because of how they how they teach the game, how they mentor their guys. Um, and so I really respect uh, what he does, and I'm excited about uh, watching their pro program go forward. I think any time that you have the men's program, uh, any time that they're doing well, it provides excitement for basketball. You know, it doesn't matter whether we're doing well or they're doing well. Uh, that that excitement in the winter in the winter months is is pretty unbelievable. Did, did you do any particular thing all season last year that you think is going to help you as a coach? 
Yeah, you know, we really took a step back and, and looked at uh, where we've fallen short uh, maybe in the past year or two and, um, you know, reevaluated a few things uh, with our program and how we, how we do things. And uh, one of those is just we've had a few too many injuries the last couple years. Uh, we feel like we've made some great changes uh, in, that, in that way. Uh, our strength and conditioning coach, Chris Sheckler, has done a great job. Our new athletic trainer, Taka, has, has done a tremendous job. And uh, we've really worked on uh, developing our players from the ground up uh, in terms of, you know, making sure that, that they're put together in the, in the right way and, and they're fit and they're strong. Um, we feel like if we can keep our best players on the floor, we have great, a great chance to, to do some unbelievable things. And we felt like that for the past two seasons. Um, and so that's been a big focal point of ours, but also just getting back to who we are. And, and that's putting a lot of emphasis on defense. Uh, that's making sure that if, you're, if you can play defense, you're on the floor and, and being consistent in that and, and how we coach and how we teach. And uh, it's, a, it's a mindset. We feel like we didn't have the right mindset last year. And um, that's, that's on me. And, and every single day when, when we come and when our players come, they have to know uh, that we're going to be tough on the floor, that we're going to be focused, um, that we can get through anything mentally, we can get through any adversity. Um, you know, we're going to execute our offense at a, at a high level. We're going to execute our defense. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just getting back to kind of, uh, I feel like this year we have the talent to be able to do that, you know, and, and it's been fun to, to be able to work with, with our players, and, and they're very, very coachable. Uh, they want to win. They're com they're, this team is, is, is probably as competitive or, or more competitive as the team that went to the NCAA tournament a couple years ago. And, and that's what I remember from that team is every single day in practice, it was an all-out war. Uh, they were fighting for positions. We had 10 kids that could play at a really high level. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter if our players are, are running around a track or if they're playing a, a board game, or uh, if they're doing sit-ups, or if they're in the weight room, they want to win. They want to be uh, the best at what they're doing. And, and I'm seeing that on, on the practice floor as well. And that's been pretty fun to, to watch. They, they want to win every drill. Uh, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to do that. Well, I thought we, um, I thought we took you know, we were a little bit less aggressive last year in how we coached defense. Um, and this year we're back to our aggressive defensive style, you know, getting up and pressuring the basketball and uh, really teaching the fundamentals of getting our hands off, moving our feet, uh, getting in the gap, being in passing lanes, being in help side, just being there wherever we need to be and, and really playing team defense. Last year, uh, I don't think that we necessarily played a great system of team defense. and. We talk about having playing five versus one. Whoever has the ball for the opponent, we want them to be not going against just their, the player that's guarding them. We want them to be going against the five that are on the floor. And so uh, really just taking pride in our defense and understanding that it's, it's how we're going to win. You know, last year it was the best offensive team I've ever coached in, in what, seven, eight years. And it was the worst defensive team I've ever coached and consequently was the worst team record I've ever had. And so, you know, getting back to, we, we're going to be able to score at a high level. We have really talented offensive players, but can we defend? You know, I think the Denver Broncos are showing defenses can do some really, uh, really amazing things. And, um, you know, when we went to the NCAA tournament, we were holding teams under 50 consistently, um, you know, under 45 consistently. So we want to get back to having a presence on the defensive side of things. <laughs> she was very amazing. She was great. But when you um, when you move this team, do you think about your time kind of with your constituents and that young leadership and re energizing Yeah, you know, I look at uh, this freshman class and, and it's hard not to make some comparisons to the year that I was a freshman. Uh, there was five in, in our class. There's five newcomers uh, in this class. And just that competitive spirit, the, the ability to come in and maybe help a program get rejuvenated um, and kind of revive a program that has been pretty good, but obviously not to where we want to go. Um, but there are, you know, it, 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 it does take some time. And it takes some time to be able to learn the level um, you know, I do remember what it was like as a freshman. Um, you know, I don't. I think everybody that ever played in college remembers their freshman year. It's the hardest, most challenging year uh, that you go through because there's so many new changes. And um, so I'm, I'm being patient with our, with our young kids. And I think that's the thing that, 
um, helps me maybe the most is to, to kind of remember that, though it's been a little bit of time now uh, since since that was the case. But, you know, it is exciting and, and um, you know, I, I try to, uh, this every, every group is unique and I try to look at this group as very unique. They're not like any other group I've ever coached. Um, and so it's going to be, we're going to learn together and, and we're going to go forward together. Coach, you guys had some issues last year with ball security turnovers. Um, looking at this year's roster, there's even less experience with ball handling. We graduated some of your primary ball handlers last year. How have you looked to improve ball security with a younger roster this season? Well, I have no doubt it's going to be better this year. Um, you know, we have uh, of the four of the five players that that are new this year, um, really four of them are ball handling guards. Uh, three of them played point guard in high school at a, at a really high level or in club at a really high level, uh, really for the top club teams in, in the United States. Uh, I saw them play against some really good defenders, some kids that are maybe some of the quickest, most athletic kids in the country. Um, and they were able to handle the ball just fine. We've seen them against our practice guys. Uh, they've handled the ball just fine. They have great pace. They have great awareness of the court. Uh, they know when the ball should get out of their hands. They know when they should hesitate and go by. Um, they have a great feel for the ball. So I, I, think, I think it's going to be better. Uh, well, I know it's going to be a lot better than it was last year. But at the same time, um, you know, uh, we need we need to make sure we're we haven't put in our press break yet. That's coming. That's coming on Thursday. Uh, that's a huge thing for us is being able to break presses at a, at a high level and break presses to be able to score, not just to get the ball past half court. So um, that's something that we'll really work hard on as as we you know get in a little bit further into practice. Is there anything specific that you might teach with the change in the rules? You're not playing halves anymore. You're playing quarters. That makes a lot of difference in the way you approach teams. You know, there's a couple things. Um, you know, one, if if I call a timeout in the first 30, 30 seconds of the game, you don't have a media for the whole first quarter. So you're going 10 minutes or 9 minutes and 30 seconds uh, without a stop in play, uh, which means you need to be in shape. One, uh, two. It, need, it means it, it's kind of a player's game. So we have to be able to recognize runs without me calling a timeout. Um, you know, because I don't want to waste that media timeout that's going to come at the five-minute mark of every quarter. And so it's going to be. It's, we're going to put a lot of emphasis on understanding. Okay, it's a 6-0 run. You know, because a lot of times players get in the flow of things, and, and we're not recognizing that. And so we may take a quick shot uh, when we need a score, or we may. We may not understand that we have to get a defensive stop, or it's going to be a 10-0 run, you know, just like that. So it's going to be, it's going to change kind of how I manage the game, and 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 versus me managing the game versus letting our point guards and our older players managing the game. I think it's going to be fun for people to watch, um, you know, because you're going to want to save those timeouts because you can advance the ball late game. So it's NBA rules. If I have timeouts left in the last minute of the game, uh, I can advance the ball to the sideline. And now we can have a great opportunity to score. So we get a stop with three seconds left. Normally, you'd be going the full length of the court. Now they bring the ball up right in front of my bench. And we can run a great sideline play and, and hopefully score. So you're going to have a lot of, a lot of different sideline plays. Normally, sideline out of bounds. We didn't spend a whole lot of time on that. Um, not very many teams did. Uh, and now it's going to be a huge part of, of what you do. Um, the, the other thing that is going to kind of change how teams play is at five fouls in each quarter, you're going to shoot two free throws. So there's no more one and one in the women's game. So um, you got to make sure we're, we're not fouling a ton at the beginning of each quarter. At the end of each quarter, the fouls reset. So if you get eight fouls in the first quarter, those fouls now in the second quarter are going to go back to zero, uh, which, is, which is kind of interesting. And now you can be aggressive again, granted. You know, if, you're, if none of your players are fouled out or in foul trouble. So a few things that are, I think will really affect the game, those three or four probably being the, the biggest ones. Time for a couple more questions. This players what? Players you've seen play ball time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like watching both um, because the club level, you see them play against the best. Uh, there's a Nike EYBL uh, league that has the best players in the country, and all, all four of our freshmen played in that league. Um, and so it's you like to see them against 
great players. But I like watching them in their high school team because you can see, do they understand a system? Uh, do they know how to run plays? Because there's probably going to be a lot more plays called in high school than there are in club. In club, they kind of just play sometimes. Um, you're going to see if they know how to play a defensive system. You're going to see how they react to their teammates who they also go to school with and they see in the hallways every, every day. Can they get along with them? Uh, do they get along with their high school coach? Do, you know, there's so many things in high school that you really look at. You maybe not... You maybe don't check out their talent level as much in high school, uh, but you look at the team aspect of it, and, and that's probably a lot more, um, a lot more similar to the college atmosphere than a club team that is only together for two months. Don't want to get you in trouble here, but is there a team club? Is, is there much to add there? My, in club? My, my experience is that whatever sport you're talking about, club is basically. Yeah, those 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 higher level clubs though they they have a great system. They play 60 games. Uh, they start in April and they play April, May, June, July. Uh, so they have they do have a system that they play, um, and they have good coaches and um, you know. So yeah, I think the the if they're playing with a with a great in a great club system, you definitely can see a lot. You can see how they react to their coach when they get take get taken out. There's a lot more adversity probably in club uh, than there is on their high school teams. And, and you get to see how they manage that adversity. And uh, so, yeah, we, we definitely in, get a lot out of watching club basketball. Anything right. else for coach? Thank you, guys.